Hawk Roosting by Ted Hughes. This poem is about a hawk roosting or resting and thinking about itself. And this hawk is incredibly arrogant. This is a very narcissistic poem as well. And this hawk is talking about its thoughts, its feelings, how it moves around and crucially how it kills. I also think on a deeper level, this poem could be interpreted as an allegory of how people in control and in charge of conflicts think and behave. People who have resources at their fingertips and are not afraid to use them, who almost become drunk on the power that they have or feel that they have. The repeated idea here is of death and the manner of death. This hawk eats, sleeps and dreams killing. It's bred, it's developed to kill, it's a predator. But there's something almost disturbing and very sinister about the descriptions we have. If we have a look at the penultimate stanza, for the one path of my flight is direct through the bones of the living. The idea that this hawk does not care about what it's doing and who it kills or how those are killed. We've also got this other idea that in sleep this hawk rehearses perfect kills. This hawk is obsessed with killing. So the tone here, well, it's very violent, it's savage you could almost say, but it's also quite refined in that it's very, very considered. So we have a very uneasy, sort of charismatic narrator who's also psychotic, very, very violent. You could, yes, I think you could say it's psychotic. So individual words. Well... Really, I think you could say ripping. I would say of anything, you could say ripping. Or tearing, in fact. It's interesting, I thought that the word was tear, it was ripping, because it's such a violent sort of image, and this poem has lots of violent images. But actually, in stanza four, the word that I was thinking of is tearing. There is no sophistry in my body, my manners are tearing off heads. To tear something is to savagely destroy it. People tear things that they're very, very angry with. And so, because of that, I think Ted Hughes has used that particular verb there. So, alliteration. Do we have um, any alliteration here? Not really. If anything, this poem has a very sinuous, very fluent, flowing sort of rhythm. And I think that... To have alliteration here would sort of limit that in a way. You could very easily argue that actually the lack of alliteration shows that this poem flows very much. It almost evokes the flight of a bird, the flight of this hawk. So rhyme and rhythm. Well, we do have a little bit of rhyme in that we've got feet and eat in the first stanza. But there's not really very much at all. It's written in a very conversant, almost stream of consciousness tone. And so perhaps Hughes deliberately didn't do this. This is somebody talking about themselves, not in a rehearsed way, but actually just sort of thinking about it and, and, and talking. We almost have a dramatic monologue, really. And structure. Very regular stanzas. All stanzas are four lines long. However, they do seem to, on a superficial glance, get shorter and shorter. There's a not a great deal of punctuation here. But maybe that's more to do again with the conversant tone that there is. Thanks very much.